Welcome to my introduction to networking course, also known as ITN. This is the version 7 material preparing learners for the Cisco CCNA 200-301. Cisco curriculum, everything is owned and copyrighted by them. Module 16, Network Security Fundamentals. So the point of this module is to look at security threats and vulnerabilities, look at what they are and kind of basic measures uh, to make sure that we can mitigate them. Network attacks, basically identifying security vulnerabilities, mitigation techniques, and we're gonna talk about device security, specifically configuring network devices so we can harden them. Basically, turning on what features we need to to mitigate security threats. So let's go and look at security threats and vulnerabilities. So what are some common threats of, uh, on a network? Or what are some common threat actors? So basically, if we're talking network services, it could be a uh, disruption of services. Basically take out the network or make the network so slow or unusable that we can't do anything. We could also look at data loss, data manipulation, uh, being able to steal credentials like passwords or usernames. Uh, more of the extreme are things like identity theft uh, or data slash information theft, intellectual property theft. Those are all big ones that these threat actors are looking for. So a threat actor is anyone that can act on any type of threat or vulnerability on a system. So again, types of vulnerabilities. There are three main types of vulnerabilities. Technology vulnerabilities, that's gonna be looking at the protocols, the operating systems, the overall networking equipment weaknesses. Second is configuration vulnerabilities. This will include things like unsecured user or admin accounts, system accounts, backup accounts, things of that nature. Misconfigured internet services are a big one. The use of default settings is a huge part of this, or any other type of misconfigured networking equipment. Lastly is a administrative issue, and this is a vulnerability in security policies. And this is going to be a lack of written policies. Remember that the administrative policies actually dictate the security policies. So not having the appropriate security policies make it really hard to verify and audit the technical controls. These three are main sources of vulnerabilities and honestly each one of these can leave a huge hole in the overall network security. Physical security is also a huge part of this. Physical security are actually someone sh uh, showing up in person. We could be looking at hardware th uh, threats, and that will include physical damage to equipment, environmental threats. That could be temperatures, too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry, things of that nature. Electrical, that could be a non-standard power grid or a non-stable power grid. So we end up with uh, sags or spikes or improper uh, voltage to actually uh, power units, maybe noise, or even just a straight power outage, complete power loss. Lastly, the fourth one is maintenance threats. Basically, this will be poor handling of key electrical components. Uh, ESD discharge, maybe the lack of critical spare parts. I was doing a work for a casino and they have a backup core piece of equipment on the top floor. Everything is stored in the basement. And they actually have figured that it's easier for them to keep the critical spare core component top floor. That way if there's an issue, they can just run up there, run it down. And actually I had them tell me with a straight face that that was appropriate. 
they did not mind carrying a piece of equipment down 20 flights of stairs in the middle of an emergency if they needed to replace it was a core switch if they needed to replace this core switch the switch weighed 80 pounds the switch also helped run the elevators so if the switch the core switch went down they'd have to do everything via stairs but that was perfectly okay for them they actually had a plan in place if this happened do this so at least they actually had a physical security plan that looked at ways to handle this maintenance a overall good physical security outlook will have a plan addressing each one of these four major items all right so let's go ahead and let's talk about network-based attacks so these are going to be things that will be on the network or on a end host so normally we have to talk about malware when we talk about these types of attacks malware is short for malicious software basically any type of software that does malicious intent three of the main types are going to be viruses worms and trojan horses Viruses are going to be a traditional type of malware that propagates by inserting some type of a storage um, to propagate itself. A worm are very similar to viruses, but they replicate themselves. A Trojan horse is going to be a piece of software that may look legit, but provides a back door. These are not the only types of malware. We've actually seen a huge increase in things like ransomware, spyware, and adware. Ransomware being one of the most biggest issues. Mainly because with ransomware is they can use the encryption power of a computer and they can encrypt data and they can hold it ransom and make you pay for decoding that data. All right, so other types of attacks are things like a reconnaissance attack. Uh, part of that reconnaissance attack is basically mapping services, systems, and possible vulnerabilities. Looking at uh, network scanners or maybe just publicly accessible information through like a Whois lookup or a NS lookup. Part of the types of network attacks could also be things like access attacks. They can manipulate data access to, to gain access to a system. Maybe they social engineer to get a username and password. Maybe they send phishing emails to gain access. Different ways to gain access to a system. One of the interesting parts is they're all about gaining access. Where this, in contrast, denial of service, is about disrupting access making a system overloaded so that no one can gain access to that resource. So there's a lot of issues with these types of attacks. One could be looking to gain access. One could be looking at stealing access. One could be completely disrupting all access so that no one can have access. All right, other common types of access attacks are things like password attacks or trust exploits. So, uh, port redirections, or even man in the middle. So password attacks are pretty simple. Those are things that might be guessing passwords, brute forcing passwords, using a packet sniffer to actually sniff the wire for plain text passwords, things of that nature. A uh, trust exploitation is where a uh, threat actor actually will use unauthorized privileges to gain access to a system trying to compromise that target. Port redirection is what you would expect. That is where a threat actor using one port tries to connect to a compromised host because the compromised host may trust or accept inbound connections on that port. And then from there, they may pivot to other types of systems. Man in the middle is where a device or individual is actually between a source and destination between two legitimate sources and destinations and the threat actor then captures data back and forth and they may manipulate data back and forth or even just steal the data back and forth 
thus being able to gain access to passwords or manipulate data or access a system, different types of ways when dealing with man in the middle. Man in the middle can also patch files in transit. So if you download something and there happens to be a man in the middle, the man in the middle application could actually patch any download to embed malware in them. So there are some issues with man in the middle based attacks. Denial of services we've already kind of talked about. That is where a an attacker tries to limit the responsive capabilities of a resource by having several things access resources on that system. The more devices attacking a system, the more resources that they can be used up. So oftentimes we get what's called a DDoS attack, a distributed denial of service. And normally what this is, you have a attacker, threat actor, that may control a ton of other computers and all of those computers target a specific destination, overwhelming that destination. The threat actor has a command and control system that may program or have control over several other hosts. Those are called zombies. And so this network of zombies is called a botnet. We have a lab exploring the SANS website, looking at identifying and detailing specific network security threats. And that is this chapter in a nutshell. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out.